Throughout the course of your Photoshop life, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the image menu. I'll take you step by step through all of the features that you're going to use the most. This menu allows us to control many of the general properties of our images. We'll be able to change the size and shape of our image, the resolution, the manner in which colors are treated, as well as the colors themselves. The mode submenu opens to a variety of confusing looking abbreviations and descriptions that probably don't make any sense at this point. The two main modes that you're going to be using are CMYK and RGB. Both of these modes are color abbreviations. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for CMYK, and red, green, blue for RGB. CMYK is used almost exclusively in print work. It takes its name from the process that printing presses use to create colors. In most printing presses, they use some combination of these four colors in order to print every other color. RGB, on the other hand, is used by monitors and television screens to show color. If you zoom into an older television screen, you'll see that it's actually made up of tiny red, green, and blue lights. For most of the work that you'll ever do, the RGB setting works just fine. If you do get into a situation that calls for you to deliver a final product in CMYK format, I find that it's best to start the work in that format rather than converting it over once you're done. There's not a direct color conversion from one to the other, so if you aren't careful, your colors could be slightly different than what you expect. If you do conversions at a later time in the process, I also suggest that you allow yourself some time to rework the colors before you submit it for print due to this conversion discrepancy. One last note here before I move on. There are some images that you will open up in Photoshop to work with and they won't behave properly. Either you'll be trying to add a certain color and it'll come out a different color, or certain menu items and panels will be grayed out. This can usually be solved by looking into the image mode and making sure that you have it set to RGB. The adjustments menu is where we find all of the color correction options. Later on in this series, we're going to look at color correction in great detail. At this stage of the game, I want you to open up an image and simply play around with these options to familiarize yourself with how they look. Without going into too much detail, uh, the first four options deal with the light and dark of your image. The next section deals with how color is treated. The third section basically controls the color separation points. HDR and shadows and highlights are more light and dark functions. And the last group and controls are the quick functions. These options are accessible with the other functions, but here they offer us a quicker route. Each of these correction options operate in much the same way. You select the one that you'd like to try out and simply start moving the sliders around. As long as we have the preview box checked, our changes will show up in real time right on the image that we're working with. Just remember that if you confirm your changes and you want to save your image, that you do so with a different file name from the original. Because once you save over your original, any changes that you've made will be permanent and you won't be able to undo them. The last section that we're going to take a look at is the transform section. First off, the difference between image size and canvas size. Remember it this way. If you want to enlarge or reduce your photo, use image size. And if you want to change the area that you're working on, use canvas size. Image rotation has all of the most common options available in single clicks. You can also flip your image horizontally and vertically. One note here about the arbitrary rotation option. If you use this, just be aware that Photoshop will always try to maintain a rectangular shape for the image. So if you rotate your image 37 degrees, it will actually enlarge your canvas around the image so that it conforms to this rectangle. There is a tool that allows us to rotate the canvas without adding all of this space, but the image itself will save without the applied rotation. This tool will come in extremely handy once we begin drawing with a tablet. The duplicate option makes a copy of your image in a new tab. Apply image and calculations compare images or layers within an image to one another in order to adjust color data and are actually the foundation for similar tools used in forensic science. The remaining items on the menu are more advanced features. Well, that's all for now. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and if you have any questions, send them to requests at mahalo.com.